Hey, what's up guys? How's it going? It's Scooter Fishman here. We're going to be Griffin Trapping in Kingdom Clash. Now, we're currently up against uh, SE, we've got BAY, we've got FL. These are some guilds from Kingdom 163. Uh, now, of course, uh, let's just get right into the action. That way I can soak up all of their hits and give them absolutely no chance whatsoever of being able to pull out and stop what just happened. Of course, they don't have any idea. Clearly, they have no idea what's going on because it happens that fast. Now, of course, for the dozens of marches they did, they get a quite a bit of resource out of that, but they lose a lot of stuff along the way, <laughs> which it's pretty, man. It's real pretty when you can pull this off, because you can see here, there's just march after march after march of Tier 4 dead that, frankly, it, I, I've never done anything better. And so what you guys got to do in order to be able to make a build like this, all right, and in case any of you want to, like, copy what I'm doing, all right? The idea is you want to have at least 1.5 to 2 million troops. Now, if you want, like, an estimate of what that would be, you can split this up however you please, but the idea would be to have around 250 to 300,000 tier 4. You can have as high as 400,000, for example. Uh, and the idea then would be to basically build yourself a little bit of tier 2 cavalry and tier 2 infantry for the remainder of that 1.5 to 2 mil uh, remainder. It really depends on how many armies you have because really it's just 375,000 with the 50% boost times the number of armies you have access to. Like I have access to 8 so I can go up as high as 3 million and not have too much trouble because of the shelter capacity boost and all the other things that go around it. Now of course one of the things that you want to do uh, is you want to build kind of a... I personally, if you ask me, like, I, I do cav wedge, right? So it really, it, it wouldn't hurt me to go into cav gear, but I went into rally mix, and this is just nothing more than a mix set. Works all the same. Uh, the, pre, the the whole entire... Uh, how do you say it? It's more effective, okay, if you're using cavalry gear. I'm just going to leave it at that. Now, one of the things that I do to make sure that, obviously, uh, nobody gets the impression that I'm online is I do not use any pay to win heroes. I swapped out for Child of Light. I made sure that I was in range phalanx. And then I weared my research gear. And the idea with this is that you don't give anybody the idea that you're online by not scouting, by not messaging people. You don't want to allow people to know you're online. Uh, and with that being said, you also want to be considerate of what's in your shelter. So I, I try to be reasonable, right? It's not that I... Maybe I'm a, an average tier 3 player who just forgot to shelter or something, you know? So I'll leave out, like, a little tiny itty-bitty amount of tier 2 and tier 3 in here, maybe. Or I don't have anything out at all, and I've, you know, dropped my shield. It all depends on this, the frame of mind you want to give people, okay? The one thing I can't tell you is if you hide your troops in a rally nest like I am, they're going to be able to see that. Now, if you hide it any other way, so let's say, you know, you want to hide your troops on camps, you know, that's cool and all, but somebody can always port by and hit them. Uh, the most effective way to hide your troops is to garrison and reinforce onto accounts that are shielded, so that way you have a fairly certainty, of, well, you should have a fairly good time avoiding uh, a situation where maybe you need to pull your troops, okay? You want to avoid that as much as possible because otherwise it will make it very obvious that you're trying to get Griffin Trap. Now, I did try this out 
on the islands, but because this is a 1v1 KBK, and to be honest with you, it kind of screams Griffin Trap to do it on these islands, but I don't know. The idea I was kind of going for was I, uh, what I did is I just went over to the base, and because the base is such a fairly populated area, I kind of just gave people enough reason to believe or suggest that I was maybe just some account that was conveniently around here. So like, for example, right, like I was telling you, if I really want to convince somebody that, hey, this guy is offline and all that jazz, what I'll do, right, is I'll cancel a dark nest here. I've got six, so it's no, it's no big deal. Uh, and I'll just put a camp here and put all of my tier two right there, right? And then what I'll do is I will go over to the base and go south of it by just a tiny bit, right? And then I will say, I don't know, let's put yourself like in a relatively reasonable area like this. And then you just kind of wait. You don't play, you know, you don't, you don't go, oh, hi. And then you start scouting or anything. You don't want to do that because the moment you do, people are just going to get the impression that you're trying to trick them and then good luck trapping that way. Um, now, because of the high might, obviously, uh, it works in your favor if you have like a couple billion resources and if you want some advice on how to go about getting that that really depends on what you want to go about doing it with i mean if you like for example this code 66 event if you go out and hit monsters it doesn't take very long to get a couple hundred mil but if you want like a few billion you can either uh uh probably your best bet is probably to go looking around for resource banks and actually clean them out if you can but I guess the most realistic way for most people to be able to foreseeably have a chance at doing this and doing it reasonably, I think what you would have to do is you would have to trade, I think, gems like you would during Baron War. Like, just recently I told you guys about trading resources. Like, I think your best bet would probably be to go about buying it, it through gems, uh, through trading other players for their resources. Because really, uh, all the alternatives are not so great. Now, that does mean you are playing with, you know, what you have. And I personally don't like doing that, so I just tend to go and find people that I can make fork over, hand over fist for me uh, by just going around and cl clearing their accounts out, right? But there's not really a, a certifiably wrong or right way to go about doing this. Um... One thing uh, you can see here is, is like all of these accounts here. Eventually, we're gonna go about. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and take the spoils after KBK is over with, because I'm not gonna hesitate to take back what's mine. <laughs> uh, but you know, for the most part, though, um, that's kind of the idea with the build. Obviously, for talents, uh, in case you're wondering, I basically just buff up your offense as much as possible and your HP. You don't really need to worry too much about defense. I mean, you can if you want to, but it's not necessarily a big deal if you do or don't. Um, I would say that obviously the best cap gear you have is ideal. For heroes on the wall, uh, you know, something that can come to mind is like, here you can see I'm using 20% uh, boost heroes, but really your more ideal swaps here would be anything to increase your cav. Uh, so if it can get cav up by 30% on attack and HP, anything that gives you like a 20% boost to attack and HP and vice versa, those are the things you want for wall heroes. Uh, and then for the familiars, uh, because I know some people will ask about this, uh, you know, it's, I think in my opinion, for any kind of trap right now, you want your 20% drop HP based, uh, you know, so like here I can get a 40% drop on range, I get a 40% drop for cavalry, and then for terror spike, there is a 40% drop in infantry. Okay, between those three, that's a pretty deadly combination. Uh, but something else that you could use, uh, and it might be more helpful, would be to use things like Pyres or Aquarius, these, you know, these particular familiars. We'll give you a 15% drop across all three. Uh, you could also make use of, like, if you just want to target uh, in, like 
for example, like if you wanted to, you know, like Maggot, Maggot, for example, has Venom, you can drop the 15% stun. But uh, again, the only thing that makes this beneficial is if your troops have dropped by 15%. And a lot of the time at that point, you probably don't want to go about doing it anyway. But uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I think something else that I should probably point out is that while you're doing this, you want to pick mostly the start to battle familiars. Um, now, obviously, you you have to have Griffin in order to Griffin trap, right? <laughs> and you got you probably need to have this ability at max if you want to be able to do it frequently, at least during KBK. Uh, now, of course, you know with like what kingdom you end up getting paired with and like how that all goes down, it really does depend. Like right now, I'm at 31 million score uh, with only four hours left. I don't think there's a very high chance of anyone actually going about attacking me for any reason whatsoever, but I thought I'd go ahead and I'd give you guys a pretty quick synopsis of what this is basically about and how to do it, and hopefully the video was helpful for you. Make sure to comment and subscribe if you haven't already, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys next time.